In this video, I will show you how to calculate strain and the crystalline size from XRD diffractogram using Williamson Hall plot. So Williamson Hall plot equation is defined as beta, which is the fully tap maxima, is equal to beta size plus beta strain, where beta size is a Schiller formula, which is defined as k lambda divided by cos theta into dxrt, whereas the strain is a 4 nita sin theta divided by cos theta, where nita is a strain and the dxrd is the crystalline size. Let's simplify this equation by multiplying cos theta on the right and left. So the equation goes like this, beta cos theta is equal to k lambda divided by dxrd plus four times nita into sin theta. Now let's divide by k lambda on both right and left side. So beta cos theta divided by k lambda is equal to nita in bracket four sin theta divided by k lambda plus one over dxrd. Now you can compare this equation with the equation of straight line. Y is a beta cos theta divided by k lambda the slope m which is nita x is a 4 sin theta divided by k lambda plus c which is a constant which is equal to 1 over dxr now if you plot a straight line and fit it then the slope of the line will give you the m and the intercept to the y axis will give you the c value in this case i have used a synchrotron xrd that's why the wavelength looks very small in your case if you have used copper k alpha then the wavelength will go like 0.256 nanometer. Open the origin software, drag your XRD data file, click on the column, then right click, go to the plot, in the plot, go to the line, and then click on the line. Here you will see a beautiful XRD diffractogram where X axis is two theta and the Y axis is the intensity. Now we have to get the peak center and full width half maxima for all of these five peaks. So how to do that one? Select the scaling, pick up the peak. Now click on the data selector drag it close to the peak then go to the analysis in the analysis go to the fitting in the fitting you will find the option for non-linear core fit and then click on open dialog a new window will pop up here we choose a category as the original basic function and choose a function in this category so you can choose a gaussian peak function or a laryngeal peak function here how to decide a peak function you can find out my previous video i'll be using laryngeal peak function once chosen then you will see a red line appear which is a fitting curve and the black line is the experimental data but right now fitting doesn't look so good you can go back to this window and click on fit until converge and then it will perform auto fitting here you will see a red line perfectly matches with the black line to un to know whether fitting is good or not you can look at the cod number that is r square which is 0.997 in this case pretty close to the one so that also indicate fitting is very good click on the done option it will open a new reminder message do you want to switch to the report sheet and click on ok you will find the fitting detail so y0 is offset xc is a peak center w is the fluid half maxima a is the area and h is the height and this is the standard area go back to your data now we have to do fitting for the second peak so right click and delete it now we have to perform similar process for remaining peaks so how to do that one you can go to the graph in the graph you can find option for rescale to show all the shortcut key is ctrl r now do the same select the scaling select the peak then go to the data selector bring it near by center then go to the analysis in the analysis you can find directly now non-linear curve fit which has been used previously so just click on this one it will directly open you a window with the original basic function and the function is laryngeal then simply click on the fit until converge so fitting will be done make sure the r square is close to the one just click on the done click ok and you will see now there is a second fitting line too Minimize this window, go to the graph, repeat the same process, graph, rescale all, select the second, third peak now, go to the data selector, drag it nearby center, go to the analysis, and go to the non-linear curve fit, click over here, the function is laryngeal, so just fit until converge, check the cast score is 0.997, pretty good, just click on the done. This time I will just select no, and I will go ahead with the next peak, do the same, graph, Rescale, use the scaling, select the peak, select the data selector, go to the analysis, click on the non-linear curve fit, click fit until converge 0.9967, pretty good, click on the done, no, okay, delete. Again go back, 
and click on the graph rescale so last pick to the same as we did before then select data selector go to the analysis nonlinear or fit click fit until converge and done now okay delete now go and click on the graph and rescale so we have done fitting for the all five peaks go to the data now in the bottom you can find fit line one fitting parameter then fit line two fitting parameter fit line three fitting parameter fit line four fitting parameter and fit line five fitting parameter now minimize this window a new workbook here we have to copy x center and the and the full width half maxima the fit line two do the same copy the pick center and the full width half maxima we have copied all the center values and the full width half maxima add two more column here this center and full width half maxima is in degree and for the calculation we need those values in radian so select the column c right click and go to the set column values click over here in this case you can define the function so column c is equal to column a into pi divided by 180 uh, copy these values apply then click over here it will go to the next so now is a column d paste it and instead of column a is now column b column b that's a width pi into 180 and apply in this way the values from degree will be converted into radian now add two more column and you can check out the formula again so the straight line y equal to mx plus c where y is beta cos theta divided by k lambda and x is 4 sin theta divided by k lambda so we'll define x axis first 4 sin theta k lambda k is 0 0.9 volt and lambda is the wavelength add two more column select the column e right click go to the set column values column e is equal to 4 into sin theta so theta is the c axis but this is a two theta value so you need to remember that it's column c divided by 2 4 sin theta divided by in bracket k is 0 0.94 into lambda 0.066887 bracket complete apply copy this formula and go to the next now in column f the formula is beta cos theta divided by k lambda beta is column d so i don't column d in this case we don't need to divide by 2 into cos theta cos theta is column c divided by 2 and this values need to be divided by k lambda so that's k into lambda and apply we got the x values and the y values right click and change it to set as x then this is one select the column right click plot and go to the symbol in the symbol you can find option for the scatter click over here so this will help you to plot the graph now we need to perform linear fitting why we need to do linear fitting let's understand from the equation so this is the equation of straight line so once you do the linear fitting through the slope you will get the nita value and through the intercept you will get the reciprocal of dxr go click on the analysis fitting go to the non-linear curve fit open dialog in the original basic function go to the polynomial here you choose the polynomial line it will automatically perform the fitting Go and click on the fit until converge to the fitted curve. In the fitted curve, scroll down and you will find option for the range. Use input data range. Click over here and consider custom. Now over here, we define a minima as a zero and the maxima a 25. Then click on done. Click OK. Your A is the intercept and B is the slope of the ground with the error bar. So in this case, our strain is around 0.125%. And if you want to know the grain size, then what you need to do, you need to take the reciprocal of this one. 1 divided by 0.04728. So the value is around 21 nanometer. And double click on the scale, go to the line and ticks. Over here, you can use the same option for bottom and top. Check this box. And I prefer major style to be in and also the minor in. Apply. 
Similarly, go to the left, choose this box, keep the same format. Again, click on the scale bar and you can change font size to 24. Keep the area font, I change to 24. If you feel the numbers are too many, so you can just double click on the scale and reduce this to instead of 0 0.0 to choose 0 0.05. Apply. Click on the linear fitting curve, a straight line, and change it to 3. Double click on the data point change it to circle and you can choose the size of 12 and instead of default maybe choose like a 40 apply on the right hand upper corner you can find the option which says enable disable anti-aliasing so just click on here so it will look much smoother now we need to define the x-axis what is x-axis go back here so your x is a 4 sin theta divided by k lambda so double click 4 sine theta divided by k lambda once you write l go to the font and type s y and click single for theta just right click go to the symbol map choose theta symbol insert close check this select the text and change font size to 36 beat paste now I need to change to cos and instead of 4 is a beta. So just type beta, select the text and you can type the sy, choose the symbol as a font, it will be beta cos theta divided by k lambda. The text go to the properties and over here you will find option for rotate. So choose 90 and click OK. So it will rotate the text. This is this F. I hope through this video you learn how to calculate crystalline size in microstring 30 diffractogram by using Williamson Hall plot. Please do like, share, and subscribe. And also don't forget to press the bell icon button to be updated with my new videos. Thank you for watching.